So that's what we're going to do here is circle touching the x-axis we're going to use g squared equals c circle touching the y-axis we're going to use s squared equals c if it if both axes are touching it's g squared equals f squared equals c all right now everybody look at the next part here okay question this is a i'll show the question we're doing now I have no idea what's going on with my presentation at the moment. Here we go. Question one, yeah? Okay. What type of one is it? It's an x-axis tangent. So what, what do I need to write down straight away? G squared equals C. Minus G minus F. Does that make sense? Minus G minus F. Okay, now x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. Okay, what do we say our g value is then? If minus g equals 3, what's g? Okay, what's f then? f is 4, is it? And what's your c value? C is G squared, so it's minus 3 squared, which is 9, okay? Happy days, uh, so that's 9. Do I have enough to find the equation of the circle now? Pretty much done, isn't it? It's just uh, X squared plus Y squared. Plus 2GX, what's 2GX? Minus 6X. 2fy, 8y, and c value, 9, and that equals 0. And that's one of the easiest questions you're ever going to get, provided you can remember g squared equals c. All right, you guys have a crack at question 3, and I'll pop in in a second. Touching. Yeah, so in this particular question, okay, uh, you, you could have, uh, so you know the x value is 5, don't you? All right, so the x value is 5, okay? So what's going to happen is it, it could be could be something like this, okay? I could also put underneath, couldn't I? And in that case, it would be 5 minus 5. But what's stopping me from using 5 minus 5? Huh? Yeah, y is more than zero, so that means I have to go with one. Is that all right? So it means that we're going to go up here, and we have to use 5, 5. Otherwise, it won't be a tangent. So you know automatically straight away that it's 5, 5. Okay? Now, uh, you could do it two ways, okay? You already know the radius is 5, don't you? Would you agree the radius is 5? So... You could use you could use x minus h. You could do it that way if you want. I know we don't tend to use it much, but what would be the h k value? What's the h and k value? Yeah. So unless this specifies a specific way it wants it done, that would be one of your answers straight away. And the radius squared is going to be what, lads? Yeah. Now the other way of doing it would be the uh, the. What's it, the GEF method? Okay, and you know that because uh, because both of them are tangents, aren't they? So you know that G squared has to equal F squared, and that in turn has to equal. So we know that that's X squared, that's Y squared. Uh, we know that minus G is 5, and minus F is 5. So what does that mean about G and F? Yeah, g is minus 5 and, so that would make it, what's it, minus 10x, minus 10y, and then c is squared, so what is it, 25. And believe it or not, both those answers are the same. If I multiply out the red one, it will clearly turn into the blue one, very easily. You go with that? All right.
Write down the equation of the tangent to the circle that is parallel to the y-axis. It's actually a lot easier than you think it is. Can anybody tell me where I should draw it even? Where, where would I draw it? Parallel to the y-axis. Now it's parallel to the x-axis. So this one here is parallel to the x-axis. Where do you reckon it is? That line there, yeah? Would anybody be capable of telling me what point this is here? Uh, you're right. That's five zero. Go another five out. Everybody happy? That's ten zero. So what is the name of that line? Any point on this line has an x value of what? Ten. So what's the name of the line? X equals ten. X equals ten is a vertical line that goes all the way through. Any ten value, it goes through it. Horizontal lines. If I set the line y equals ten, what would that where would that be located? Y equals 10 will cut across the top. Does that make sense? All right, happy days. That's question three done. Yo. Uh, there's your first five, and there's your second five. Now, the other five would be out, out here. All right. You guys are up. Okay. So, all right, guys, we have a quick diagram, okay? And the diagram tells us that the y-axis and x equals 8 are tangents to a circle, okay? I'd be inclined to think it's in the top. It could be in the top right or the bottom right. There's no clear winner there, is there? It could be down here, like this, all right? And the x-axis is not a tangent, correct? It doesn't say the x-axis is a tangent, does it? So it could be anywhere along this line. I have no idea where it is, okay? So for argument's sake, I'm just going to put it here, okay? Once again, it could be anywhere up or down. Does everybody, is everybody happy enough with that? Okay. Now, here's the deal, okay? We know that the line x equals 8 is a tangent, okay? So this line x equals 8 is a tangent. That means that the halfway point would be in line with what? Four, which means the radius is four. Okay, it's the first piece of information we have. Radius is four. Cool. Okay, that means the G value has to be four as well. Why does the G value have to be four? What? Well, yeah, now please remember, Y axis means what? What's Y axis mean again? Now, if, if it wasn't obvious that the radius is 4, you could have done it like this. What's the deal with f squared minus c in this specific case? They cancel each other, don't they? Because f squared is equal to c. They're the same size as each other, therefore they cancel. Therefore, the radius is root g squared, which is simply g. And what is your g value? No, minus 4. Why is it minus 4? Yeah, I think we're safe. Remember what I did earlier today? I think we're sort of safe for saying that. I think we're sort of safe for saying r squared is g squared. Then we don't have to worry about the signs then, do we? And then we can obviously say that. We know it's in the, we know it's in the first quadrant. How do, we know it's in, how do I know that? It's positive. Because it's specified x equals 8. If it was x equals minus a, it would be over the other sides. So we can safely say that minus g is 4, and therefore g is minus 4. Is that good with you guys? Okay, we've got that far. Now, good news, we already know what this is then. Okay, so that's, uh, what do we say it was, 4? Okay, now, uh, there's a random line, and this random line is here. <clears throat> See this random line? Now, <clears throat> once again, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to explain what this line does. If I bring y over to your side, what is it? It's y equals 2x minus 3. It crosses at minus 3, and it goes up with a slope of 2. And it goes up with a slope of 2. Something like that. Would you agree with that? And it goes through the center of the circle. So in that case, I would lower the circle 
until its center until its center is on that line. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think that this this center of the circle is going to be lower than I thought. Does that make sense? Now you don't need to draw that at the end of the day. All you need to know is that your point is actually on that. Your point is actually on that line. The center of the circle is on that line. So what does that mean I do with this uh, equation here then? What did I say earlier? Replace the x value with 4 and the y value with minus f. Because the center of the circle is on that line. Therefore, it balances that line when you substitute it in. Okay? So it's going to be 2 times what? 2 times 4 minus minus f, which is plus f minus 3 equals 0. I'm expecting uh, what's it going to be? It's going to be 5 plus f is 0, and f is? f is minus 5. All right, happy days. So what does that mean about the center of our circle? So it rages as far as the answer to part 1. Quarters of the center of the circle is, what's it? 4. Is it 4 or 5? Yeah, sorry. I think I, I think I sort of underestimated how, how steep a slope of 2 is. I think a slope of 2 is actually more like that. Does that make sense? And that's actually 4. 4 or 5. A slope of 2 is actually a lot steeper than I thought. Okay. So it actually does go through 4 or 5. Excellent. Find the equation of the circle. Your choice. Do you want to use x minus h or do you want to use a g squared f, the gf method? You all sticking with the GF? Okay, happy days. Nice. All right, guys. So, X squared plus Y squared. What's 2GX? 2 times 4? 8X. And then 2 times 5? 10y. Oh, it's oh, it's, oh, sorry, you're right, because it's uh, g is g is minus four, and f is minus five. Yeah, thanks for that. Who said that anyway? Oh, good man. All right. Would you agree that c is what do we say to start? C is f squared. And what's f squared? F squared is 25. And that equals 0. And we're done. All right. Lads, so the deal is that uh, we have a y axis tangent, yeah? Y axis tangent. And for argument's sake, uh, I'll put the circle here. Okay, we all cool with that? What's the center of the circle in terms of G and F? Hang with Tommy. Center of circle. Minus G minus F. Okay. Now, what we can say here is what's the radius the same as? So for argument's sake, if this is this if, if that was the point three four was the center of the circle, what could you tell me the radius was? Three. So what we're basically saying is the radius is the positive value of minus G. Radius always has to be positive. Is that all right? And what I said in the other question is just square both sides and what you get? R squared equals G squared. Is that cool, you guys? Now, next thing you used your radius formula, what happens then? What happens with the radius formula? And not in this case. What's your radius the same as? So square both sides, radius squared equals g squared plus f squared minus c. But as specified, r squared and g squared are actually the same thing. And then you're just going to get f squared equals c, and that's your proof done. All right. Will you guys try uh, part two then? Grad. All right, guys. Uh, which axis is the uh, which axis is the one that's touching again? So would everybody agree with f squared minus c? Okay. Okay. F squared minus C is a good choice to begin with. 
You okay with that? All right. Now, next thing. S squared minus C. And it touches that. What's a zero minus three? So if I was to lower that down, it'd be something like this, right? Zero. What's that? Zero minus three? Right. That doesn't tell us much, does it? All right. Here's what I'm suggesting. Earlier in the... Do you remember we used to do the triple equations? Remember we used to have G, F, and C? Do you remember we had to... So here's what I, what I would recommend we do. We do X squared plus Y squared... Oh, sorry. Plus 2GX plus 2FY plus C equals zero. We actually know two points on the graph. We know the point 4, 1, and we know the point 0, 3. Thanks. So we know 4, 1, and we know 0, 3, don't we? So why don't I substitute them in? So I'm going to substitute in 4. It's going to be 4 squared plus 1 squared plus what's that? What's it? Uh, it's going to be 8G, is it? And then 2Y, or sorry, 2F, C, and then put that equal to 0, yeah? And then what we're going to get here then? That's 25, would you agree with that? So we have 8G plus 2F plus C equals minus 25. Is that cool, you guys? Going to repeat it again. What am I going to repeat it for this time? Going to repeat it for 0 minus 3. Yeah, no, uh, it isn't isn't the full simultaneous equation now. That the G disappears, doesn't it? Does everybody agree the G disappears? And then the F is what's it minus six F plus C equals what? Zero. Yes, it is. Did I put down twenty five? Sorry, my bad. Thanks. Is that what you suppose? I'll oh, not be doing that. No. All right, lads. Now, lads, good news. We only need one of these equations. Even though we have three of them, only one of them is actually useful. Which one do you think is the more useful one out of the two of them? I'll highlight the two of them now in a second, right? There's this one here. And there's this one here. Which one's more broken down? It has one less letter, doesn't it? And what can I replace C with? How many letters do I have left now? Huh? One letter. You can find F really quickly now. Uh, sorry, that's F squared now, isn't it? I right, bring it all over one side. F squared minus... How many different values of f do you think we're going to get? Well, it's a quadratic equation, which usually means two answers. But here's the problem. We already know that it's going to have to be. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, look at that. We could have got that all along. If it's level with what? Yeah, we could have got that f value at the start, actually. Because it has to be minus 3. It has to be in line with the tangent here. Could have got that at the very beginning. But isn't it great, though, that if you didn't think of that, you could still work it out. You don't have to be that smart. like. So F minus 3, bracket. And what do we get? F equals 3. Now, F equals 3, and then F squared equals C. So what does that mean for C? So what? C equals 9. And there's one last equation we need. This one here. So what are we going to do with this one? So H E. 2 times F is 2 times 3. Which is 6. C is 9. That's minus 17. Oh God. It's going to be minus 34. Is it? Or minus 32. Divided by 8 though. Minus 4. And. Remember, the center of the circle is minus g minus f. 4 minus 3. Cool. What does the question actually want from me again? What's the equation of the circle? 
fill it into the equation, isn't it? X squared plus Y squared plus anybody? 2GX, which is 2FY on a 6F plus C, 9 equals 0. Okay, that's cool.